The title for this panel is How Should Design Intervene into the Public Sphere? Um, and I'm going to problematise that question a little. Um, the part I'm going to focus on is um, uh, how we talk about the public sphere. Um, and I'm in particular, I'm going to look at government, public policy, regulation and governance, um, about which I'm almost entirely ignorant. Um, but through dabbling um, in having opportunities to work with civil servants in the UK and uh, public servants uh, in the EU um, and, um, and meeting other scholars, um, uh, beginning to sort of try and delve into some of these questions. Um, there's growing interest in design in governments, um, both the um, all-party parliamentary design and innovation groups publication um, from a few years ago, Restarting Britain, and yesterday the Lisbon Council, a think tank um, working in, in the European <coughs> arena, um, published a report uh, which is very good on co-creation, which is not about design, but it is about co-creation and argues for design as being a way to enable that. So design is increasingly visible inside government entities at different levels levels, we've just heard from Sarah about a public sector, uh, sorry, a local government, but actually at central government and regional government and in the making of policy itself. So today, when we're talking about the public sphere in this panel, I'm going to talk more specifically about public policy. And to do this, I want to start with a very, very mini tour of policy studies. Um, and in particular, I draw your attention to the work of Peter John and Michael Howlett. And I'm not going to do a sort of bad literature review here, but it is important to name some of the names whose, whose work this draws on. So what is public policy? Um, an early definition from the 1970s. It's what government chooses to do or not to do. Um, Early studies of um, government policy making really very much looked at the institutions, so the civil service, the bureaucracies and so on, and the political parties about how these entities made policy. Um, a second wave, as defined by Peter John, um, began to look more broadly at the um, non-government actors who are involved in the making of policy that might include academics, think tanks, different kinds of expert, uh, business um, activists, um, uh, and also uh, small business and, and, and community groups and so on. So it's a growing, sort of an expanding understanding of um, the policy making arena. Um, some of the interesting thinking here is about the importance of how coalitions form to make policy. Um, and then the idea that policy is uh, making at the intersection, uh, policy formation it comes from streams of activity around um, problems. So what becomes a public problem that government people, some people think government should do something about? Um, what ideas are there to address it or solutions? Um, and the politics around that. Um, and then an, a further development was the idea of punctuated equilibrium, that there are moments where um, ideas lead to rapid change inside um, the, the actors who are making policy, dis making policy um, and let alone implementing it. Um, so a, a strong focus in this st in the studies of policy is about how things change and why it is that some things stay stable. And I'll come back to this. So in this context, um, this very brief sketch of what might public policy mean. Um, so our question is about, for today, this panel, um, what's, how should design intervene into that? Um, and we begin to see that public policy involves multiple actors who work together in coalitions or, or groups. They have different, and there's different ways of understanding how they come together, the relations between them, and the kinds of action they might take inside uh, or outside or through government. So there is no short, snappy answer to how design should engage with this complex and unfolding sphere about which there are different understandings of how even policy is made. Um, however, I will sketch out some of these things, having said that, um, because I do think designing uh, the, the material practices of design can make some claims about having some contributions to make to the formulation um, and implementation and understanding of policy. The first is um, very similar to um, Mahmoud's point earlier about a materialising capacity of designing. So problem making terms we've heard today, problem making, future making, the mediating between what is and what could be, 
These are uh, directly relevant to the making of public policies problems and the making of the coalitions that address them and, 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 and the anticipating of new arrangements between them and new sets of relations between different actors in the public sphere. A second capacity of designing is um, its inventiveness, um, using the word from the uh, uh, philosopher uh, Whitehead, who, who um, talks about inventiveness as opening things up. So here, going beyond uh, existing understandings, existing framings, the way things were done before, and how they are understood. So here, the benefit uh, or the offer for uh, public policy making is about problematizing, challenging, and going beyond existing frames and agendas and opening up participation to broader sets of actors um, and in the creation of policy, new policy imaginaries. And then the third uh, area of design practice is the zooming in and out, um, which brings lived experience of different actors, different social actors um, who become sort of objects of public policy, bringing their lived experience into view in different ways into relation to, to infrastructures and institutions and devices and practices in the way that, again, that Mahmoud's show, work showed um, very uh, eloquently earlier and moving between these different perspectives, um, which again aids with the building and, and maintenance of coalitions and agendas and the creation of new ways forward. Um, so to back to the question for this panel, how should design intervene into the public sphere? Um, those three things I've outlined, uh, the materialising capacity, the inventiveness and the zooming in and out, these capacities are already being used um, in different ways to uh, inside government, inside public policy making. But how, the question was not can they be used, it's how should they be used. And so I'd like to add a capacity to um, open up uh, political and, eth and ethical issues um, that they are as, uh, which are already intrinsic, as, as people have mentioned today, um, and, and with a, 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 grow, a focus on attentiveness and the consequences for different kinds of human and non-human actor in the, in, the, in the public policy arena. So to answer the question, how should policy, sorry, design intervene into the public sphere, which I'm defining, sort of subdefining as public policy, um, requires attending to different conceptualizations of the public and, and, and being more aware of how um, public policy is understood and implemented, and that itself is a research field. And what I've tried to do here is sketch out some of the linkages that might go, might be useful to take forward. Thank you.